No, it's working. Sort of. It is definitely not worth bending another fender on the other side, so... And I'm not going to make you guys watch all this, but... We're going to take that fuel tank and that fender off. <sighs> we're going to gingerly back it up here and then take the tracks off. Starts right up, has that intermittent pop, but man, does it start quick. N never had it start that quick before. Over here on the fuel tower, we get a little bit of fuel pressure, but never good. And I'm told that these gauges really only show if you have restriction in your fuel filters, but we're gonna open this up and I'm gonna drain a little out and see if we got any junk in the bottom of that fuel tower. Long-winded, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It looks pretty clean. Yeah. We can put it back in, I think. Yeah, I think so. I cleaned it out pretty well, if, but... If there was anything in there, it yeah, would have come out. It would have. Because this is the lowest part on the system. The, the later ones of these, they did away with that. I don't know why that was bugging me, but now I can sleep tonight. Got the fuel tank off. Got the seat undone. We'll finish taking the other... This fender off. And the seat and then we'll pull this track off of here. Well, that's the back of the seat. That mark there's not supposed to be there. That's a scratch. Pretty deep one too. By this point, we've already decided we're not gonna try and take this tractor to the show, but there is definitely something that does not want it to be there. Either that or I'm just tired. But uh, we're gonna take the fender off. We're gonna get these tracks off of here. We. At least we got another year till the show, so we got plenty of time to fix everything. So, so I, I don't know. We might address the bellow seals. We'd like to get this out and pull it and run it and break that engine in. But it it at this pace, we're, we're not making it very fast. I did want to note that I figured out an excellent way to bend foldover locks. And uh, it, you just drop the seat of a D4 right on them, and it, and it bends them, see? Just like that. It's perfect. That, that's how you bend fold-over locks. That's how we do it anyway. I don't, I don't think that's proper, but it works. The other good thing is Dad was worried about mixing up a batch of paint and having leftover paint for that fender, but now if we got extra paint, we can put it on the seat. See, this is a win-win. I can't begin to tell you how frustrating it is to be this close to the end of the project and not be able to finish it. It's completely aggravating and then when you have a setback like a bent fender or scratching the seat, it just mm. We've got our fuel line loose. This is our main diesel one. There's a little seep here. We're gonna address Dad's gonna plug it off for now so that we can get the track off of here It appears we've went back to the future we have no fenders, no fuel tank, and no seat. So now we can safely get these tracks off of here. We've been discussing our options right here, and Dad's marking the links that we know are still having trouble. They're all, they will all kind of move, all of them. 
It's just that they're very, very sticky. So I think we're going to build a track press. That's, that's our only way out of it if we want to use these chains. And the only other chains we have are very worn out. Here, all the way up to this front here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of them. Yeah. Maybe thirteen. Because all these on the bottom are good until you get to that very last link. Because yeah, we'll one, have to do the here. master link. This side, you can tell by the slack in it after we let it loose that this is fine all the way around until we get to those ones right there. I think we got one, two, three, four. There's actually only four or five of them. Maybe one right there. We got a plan, and we're not going to waste any time switching the tracks with the ones on Festus that were the original ones off of this tractor. We're going to take these tracks off, we're going to pop out the pins that we need to and get every, we'll check every link and make sure every one of them moves by hand before we put them back on here. That'll give us time to fix the fender, to fix the back of the seat, and any other little minor things that we think we need to do. We've even discuss popping off one of the sprockets again to check the bellow seals. That'll give us some time to iron out the starter pinion. We know that it runs. I think we got our injectors figured out. It, it needs to be run. It needs to be broke in. Uh, the pony motor runs. Everything's good. I got to make sure I get the water out of here before we have any freezing, but I think hopefully we'll have this thing running and all together before then. We're going to back 4G up where it's going to live until we get those tracks freed up. That should be even. All right. We're almost level. Well, Looks like we're going to have to make some pin pushers for our track chains. And we're further behind than where we started today, this morning. Our plan is to do some body work on the seat and the other fender. We'll get that done. And then we're going to start making some plans to do the pin pushing out of the track chains. Come on, big stripes.
We just put a little bit of body putty and glazing putty in those divots where the old tags were because the new tags we're gonna put in there are a little bit smaller. Everything's going in temporary storage. We're hoping in the next month or so to have this thing up and running with those tracks. But we're gonna make a tool. We're gonna make a pin pusher and push those stuck pins out of those tracks. It's not gonna be an elaborate pin pusher, but it's gonna be more of the mobile type pin pusher that we can move around in the shop, not a self-standing unit. We're gonna have all the parts ready when we get the tracks done to put everything together. I do wanna thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Those things are sticky, man. Yeah. To answer a question, yes, I'm wearing hickory stripe bib overalls. And not this is not because I'm an engineer or anything. It's because these are the only USA made roundhouse bib overalls that I could find in my size. I have some ordered in my size, but they've been ordered for about six or so months. So I'm still waiting for them to get here. But uh, I kind of like them. And it drives my mom and my wife nuts that I mix the patterns, the stripes with the plaid. They hate it. I say it's terrible, but I love it. I say it fits my personality. Weird. Big stripes. Hey, what are you doing, kitty? Hi. We're both wearing stripes today.